Hello there. My name is Faisal Khan, founder and CEO of Voice Bootcamp and UC Collaboration. I would like to welcome you to our new series of study guide designed for those who are preparing for CCIE Collaboration exam. This is a study guide focused just for the exam itself. Now, if you're a beginner, then this is not where you want to start. You may want to look at our self-study kit uh, foundation. Whereas this is more toward people who are preparing for the exam and they need clarification for that exam. So the first section we're going to focus on is Voice VLAN, Data VLAN, DHCP, and NTP. You are given a topology where there are three sites involved. Head office, site B, site C. Now in the head office, you will have HQ phone 1 and HQ phone 2 connected to a switch. You have an HQ router where an interface that goes to your server VLAN where your call manager servers pop, sub, unity, presence and UCCX servers are reside. The three device, the router, the two IP phone along with the router itself are connected to a switch 1. You have a PSTN connection via T1, WAN connection via frame relay. On side B, you have a side B router with a side B call manager cluster. You also have one phone in side B, not two, so these pictures you can just ignore it. There are only one phone in currently in side B. And it also have a T1 and a WAN connection. On side C, you have two IP phone, one video phone and one 7965, with a side C router that is hosting your call manager express along with Inuri Express in SRE module. Inside C, however, you have an E1 connection. Now, there are backbone network which you may may not have control of, so just keep in mind. In a backbone, you have a PSTN phone for you to test your call. You have a backbone router for NTP, and there may be one or two additional servers that may may not be as part of your la uh, lab. Now, there are uh, DIDs number assigned to each location, 408, 20Y, where Y could be a pod number. Uh, 2XXX, for example, whereas site B is in North Carolina, 97230Y3XXX. For site B, on the other hand, is Hong Kong, starting with 240Y4XXXX. Each location has been provided with their own respective subnet. You can take a look at your uh, lab kit for uh, identifying what subnet goes where. Now, you are given a task which is to configure your VLANs for your IP phone based on HQ, uh, site B and site C respectively. The VLAN numbers are defined as 102, 302, 502 respectively for HQ, site B and site C. Now you can refer to the topology just to see if there is any uh, discrepancy or is there any information that may lead to change of these numbers but most likely these are the numbers you're going to have to deal with. Now, there will be also a PC connected to uh, the, IP, uh, the IP phone. So because the word, mention or the word PC is mentioned, that means you, may need, you need to pay attention to your data VLAN. Now, data VLAN are defined as 202, 402, 602, respectively for their site HQ, site B, and site C. So this is the actual requirement for your lab number one. Now to configure them, uh, obviously you, you will configure the HQ router, you will define your voice VLAN by saying VLAN 10Y, which is 102 in our case. It, you know, it's a good idea to name the VLAN so that uh, the proctor knows what VLAN goes where, even though they wrote the lab, but they spec it to, you know, as a CCIE that you should know how to document your uh, network. Now once the data and voice VLANs are defined, you can then apply them to your voice port using a range command or individually, however you prefer. Range command will save you some time and this exam is all about saving time. So here's a switch port voice VLAN one, uh, 2 of Y from my data, sorry, switch port access VLAN 2 of Y. I'm encapsulating it. Now you don't have to encapsulate and trunk this port um, in every routers. Contrary, you don't, it also not going to affect you if you do so. So I have a habit of trunking them. You don't have to trunk them, uh, the phone port. However, the router port, the, usually the first one, because the router is going to carry both data and voice VLAN, you must trunk the router port. Now, phone uh, port number two and three where my IP phones are connected, I'm, def I'm simply defining my access VLAN command, voice VLAN command, and a port fast. Uh, port fast. 
So I do the same thing for port number three. On side B, uh, keep in mind side B has an ether switch uh, module built in. Most likely you have a VLAN 30Y name, VLAN 40Y, and then again define the name. The name is actually incorrect. It should be side B, not HQ. And then of course you have your side B phone. Now keep in mind side B only has one phone, so you only need to do that for one port. Now always type show CDB neighbor to see where the phones are connected. Sometime it may be port 1 or 2 but in the documentation say it's supposed to be port 3. Uh, the last thing you want is some sort of discrepancy. So ensure that what the document says does actually match the hardware that you have. Also ensure the CDP is enabled because without CDP Cisco phone will not function properly. For site C uh, you define your VLAN just like your HQ. Uh, you can define your, you can assign them to all the voice port. Again remember the HQ port the sorry the phone port uh, router port needs to be trunk, but the remaining port just can be an access VLAN and um, voice VLAN command. The next section is configuring DHCP and NTP. You are required to configure subscriber as a DHCP server, so your address will be 142.1y64.12, and you are to assign IP address for HQ phone through this DHCP server. Uh, in the range of, uh, for example, 30 to 50. Side B, you are required to configure uh, Side B call manager as a DHCP server for Side B phones. Again, it should be in that range, 30 to 50. So on the call manager side in HQ, you will go to publisher, go to system menu, select the DHCP server, and add a new. Now, obviously, we're going to select Site. B sorry HQ uh, site, but subscriber as a, our T um, what do you call uh, DHCP server address. Now keep in mind, if your IP phone does not get an IP address from DHCP server, and you have verified every configuration seems to be fine, then you may have to disable the CSA from the uh, publisher or subscriber server. Once the DHCP server is added, the next step is to define the DHCP subnet, which in returns basically where you create a subnet for HQ phone. You define the range of address, subnet address, starting range, end range. Make sure you define your default gateway. And again, keep in mind if the default gateway address may not does not match the subnet itself, your phone may not be able to get uh, to the call manager. Sometimes it might get the IP address, but it may not get the get to the call manager because default gateway is wrong. Subnet mask is very important, so make sure you put the correct subnet mask. Now the primary TFTP option. Now you're supposed to have a subscriber as a primary, though this is supposed to be dot twelve and this is supposed to be dot eleven. I, I I kind of have a reverse. So you can go ahead and make sure that dot twelve is the first choice primary and dot eleven is your secondary. On the HQ router, where the IP phones are connected, the voice VLAN, make sure the IP helper address is configured properly. If the IP address is not there, then obviously your IP phone um, will not be able to communicate with the DHCP server. Now, if you are facing a problem of IP phone not getting an IP address, uh, my suggestion, either through practice or in the exam, is to configure local DHCP on the router, remove the IP helper address, and see if the IP phone gets an IP address. You can type the command debug IP, sorry, show IP DHCP binding. If your IP phone gets all those details and the IP address, that means there is some problem with your call manager, not the, uh, the router or the VLAN configuration. But after creating a local DHCP and you still see the phone does not get it, get an IP address, then there is a possibility that you may have VLAN mismatch or some other misconfiguration on the router on the switches itself. Sometimes you may need to reset the phone configuration for the VLAN to work. So this is something that you have to do on the HQ router. Now you do the same thing for side B but the side B you gotta add a DHCP server in side B. Again if you believe that side B server is the problem where it's not assigning an IP address then disable the CSA. To disable CSA, you you SSH to the call manager server using a PuTTY, then type utils system, sorry utils CSA disable. 
and then of course you have to restart the server here's an example of uh, so there's a command util system restart uh, this is a command this is to add a scope for site B same same information from 30 to 50 make sure default gateway is set and make sure option 150 is defined now keep in mind site B does not have subscriber so there is no subscriber IP address to deal with now IP helper address for site B should go on the voice VLAN interface because that is the ether switch module you can put the IP address on your IP um, interface VLAN 30Y or 302 where you define the IP helper address pointing to the call manager IP on site C, site C is a call match express you are expected to get uh, configure the Cisco 2921 as an iOS DHCP server where it should assign an address from this range right here so in order to define a range what we have to do is exclude IP address that are outside the range so for example I'm excluding from 1 to 29 so first 30 address 29 address and from 51 to 254 so what I really have is from 30 to 50 and then create a scope where you define the network that you want to address subnet option 150 that is the IP address of your call match express in our lab and then of course last but not the least default router for the IP phones which is acting as default gateway so this information should be correct again once this is done you should see your IP phone start to get IP address from the router you are required to configure NTP on call uh, HK router call manager site B call manager R1 R2 and R3 routers to synchronize a local clock with a backbone NTP server the backbone NTP server is running in a coordinated use universal time zone so here's an example uh, you can type clock time zone PST minus 8 to define the time zone for HQ define the source loopback address and define the IP address of the NTP server slightly different than what you have in the previous slide now you may have to configure summer time in um, uh, time zone for example PDT so you can take a look at the how to configure a time zone in summertime a daylight saving for site B is a central time zone minus 6 source address source from loopback and again the NTP server address for site C which is Hong Kong plus 8 loopback and define the NTP source address sorry the server address now on the call manager side you go to the OS administration go to the NTP I think believe settings then NTP server make sure NTP server is included there and it is also accessible go to the publisher OS administration of the publisher on the side B do exactly the same now by now you should know how to go to the administration so OS administration server and find the NTP server list so that's pretty much it for this particular uh, note so this is like I said the way we are explained in the exam uh, sorry uh, we're required to do it in the exam and this is how we conduct our CCI collaboration bootcamp on those five days or ten days bootcamp alright so this is be it for the first section I will see you in the next